Today, one of my friends asked me a question I wanted to answer on today's show. He was asking, how do you, as someone who's networking, because he's seen me doing a lot of networking, how do you connect and offer value with people? Because one of the things that he was wondering was how I keep knowing how to get the right people to go to a particular restaurant that they want to go to. How do I know when to invite somebody to a particular event? How do I know when to uh, fly somebody to Las Vegas to attend a meeting for business networking? What is it about the people that I'm interacting with allows me to know not just who to connect with, but also what kind of value I could offer personally to these people so that they want to actually contribute to my goals or plans or you know, do it in a way where they want to stay a part of my life. One of the things that he noticed was that recently one of the things that I've been trying to do was network with a lot of people in the entertainment world. And when I'm connecting with people in the entertainment world, these are people that you know, are always engaged with entertainment in the sense of work, not necessarily in terms of um, entertainment just for entertainment purposes. A lot of them have been in theater and music. And being somebody who's not in theater and music, one might assume, how can you connect or relate to these people? One of the things that is interesting about what I try to do is try to find ways I can just connect on a human level. So when I reach out to people that I want to learn more from in terms of theater, music, entertainment, or in business or something else, I just want to connect with them, not necessarily in the sense of just like the business that I could learn from them. Especially if I'm new, a lot of people try to connect with people that could mentor them so that if they're in the business world, they're connecting with people in the sense that they want to get mentored. And that's pretty much all they're trying to do. When I'm reaching out to people to connect with them for networking, I usually want to develop some kind of a personal ground-based relationship and figure out ways where I could connect with them on that first, but very quickly before I go into ways where I could figure out who they are and connect with them in terms of value. Value that I could offer them actually, as opposed to the other way around. I was um, hanging out with a woman yesterday and she was asking me why I have such a big Rolodex of people. For her, she didn't understand why I would do that because most people, when they connect, they're really just trying to find out who can be their friend a friend that they can hang out with socially, and if they're the kind of person they like to hang out with and vibe with, and that's pretty much it. And I do that. I mean, my closest friends are people that are just fun, good, positive outlook people that I can hang out with and chill with without having to worry about them interested in being um, some part of my life or business. Uh, today I was hanging out with Tony Shea from Zappos. He's a billionaire. At the same time, he talks about how he prefers to hang out with weirdos like myself or people that are not interested in hanging out with him because he's a tech CEO and they have this next idea to pitch. One of the things you got to do in order to figure out whether or not people want to be a part of your life and what value you could offer them is to figure out who is it that you're talking to? What, are, what is it that they want first? So find out what it is that they're engaged with. So if I'm going to a networking event, for example, um, I went to a networking event in New York this last weekend for the Commercial Theater Institute. Someone was, you know, just hanging out by themselves. I walked to them and asked them, you know, what got them interested in participating in this event, found out a little bit about their life, and I tried to figure out ways I could contribute to them. Whenever I meet people that are engaged with anything that I might be able to connect with them on, that whether they're like, um, in the business world, or an entrepreneur, and I can connect with them and share business ideas or introduce them to other business people that are local because business owners love networking with other business owners. Or if they're in music or dance, I can invite them to come by the music studio. That's a super easy way to connect with people. But a lot of people don't have that common connection. So the other ways I could do things is just invite people out for dinner or drinks. Because whether you're the most powerful billionaire on the planet or whether you're just some nice person that's working on a startup, 
that looks like they have potential and you want to hang out and buy with them because they're fun and cool. I want to just connect with people from that standpoint because every single person on the planet has to eat or have a drink. Now my friend was asking, how do you know what kind of restaurants you want to hang out with them? Now for me, I usually like restaurants that kind of convey like a good vibe and good energy. So if I'm going to say like a Cafe Leon down the street here in Vegas, it's a place that has a health environment, uh, healthy food, healthy drinks, smoothies. There's um, an awesome ambiance. So it makes everyone have this positive feeling. I like that because it has that environment. Um, other things I look for, if one of the weird things that I do is I actually will Google the most romantic restaurants in whatever city I'm in and invite people to those restaurants because they're usually the restaurants that have like this cool positive ambiance. The funny thing is I'll do that for business meetings. Even when I'm with Owen or my board of directors, it's really just a chance to vibe with people. Meals is just a chance for you to kill two birds with one stone. Everyone has to eat. And also when you eat, it kind of gives you a feeling like, you know, um, you're enjoying the moment as opposed to just enjoying the conversation. So if you're having good food, good drinks, it kind of adds that good positive energy. That's why I like it also. I also appreciate though when people just come over to my house and I cook for them or I go to someone else's house because now it's personal. When you can show someone your world and you're going to trust them in your world, your personal space like that, and they're going to do that to you, that's a huge bond of trust that is something that you really got to respect. I think that's really powerful. However, I always try to figure out ways that I might be able to help people through connections. I spent a lot of my time collecting a lot of experiences with as many people as I can because I know that one of the ways I can help contribute to other people's lives is connecting people to other people that might be able to help them out with a project. I'm not in journalism, I'm not in um, technology in the sense of owning a tech startup, but I'll network with people that are journalists or in technology and I'll invite them to either be a part of an interview with me or a mastermind or some kind of a group gathering or party because you never know who knows something that you want to know or you never know if they have mutual friends or friends that you want to meet and also if they're just cool people that you could vibe with that's cool on the other hand you know you got to figure out whether these are people you want to have in your soul circle because a lot of people that i've also invited to random parties i found out that they didn't really vibe well with my friends, so I just don't re-invite them to other events. And I think that's really important for me because I have a core group of friends and I want to help the lives of that core because it's super important for me. Wow, there's some loud birds over there. <laughs> super loud birds. Look, look like they're going to town. Yeah. It's like a bar. Yeah. Happy hour. In terms of like the, the value I feel like you should be able to offer people for, for anyone. It's a lot of it has to start with your mindset. Because a lot of people start with the mindset, it was like a closed mentality. Most people when they go to networking events, they're like, they're thinking to themselves, I'm never going to see this person again. I'm getting a bunch of business cards just to be polite. And they don't really follow up with people. It's very rare that people will follow up. And if they do follow up, they don't necessarily follow up with the intention to meet that person in the future. And uh, sometimes it's true. Sometimes you are just trying to be polite. The funny thing though is that when you're trying to focus on just trying to connect with every single person you can and have everyone offer value, it actually works. I mean, if you look at, if you look at say our company, for example, we've had so many people volunteer to help our company. You know, thousands of people over the last uh, decade and a half have volunteered to help our company. And that has been so important and I appreciate that so much. And it wasn't like I was looking for any particular kind of skill set. I mean, I've had people who have been basically just living with their parents, had no college experience, and we've trained them to become videographers. They've had successful careers now in video production um, just because they had a positive attitude. And I think that just surrounding yourself with the right kind of people in terms of the vibe of the people you want to hang out with is more important than even people that have skill. Um, because if you have people that have an open mind and a great vision, that's in and of itself value that's rare, especially loyalty, loyalty and trust and that positive outlook. Those are the, th and an open mind. I think those are the things that I look for most when hiring people, connecting with people. And I want to convey that's the kind of person I am as well when I'm connecting with people. 
And when you do that, people are more likely to even receive any gifts or value you want to offer them, whether it's connecting people with other people. You, you just feel like you could vibe with them. I mean, most people want to connect with people just because they're good people. If you look at some of the most powerful people on the planet, they usually have an entourage of people that are a lot less you know, developed in terms of their career, but they have a lot of things going on in their lives in terms of like uh, personal values that people could relate to. And those core values of trust and loyalty and a positive outlook and that open-mindedness, that in of itself sounds like it's like a commodity that everyone has, but it's actually not, it's super rare. Um, and it's not like most people will actually be open to that outlook of finding people and just connecting with people based upon those values. But if you are that kind of person, you're more likely to get success. It's just a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are kind of like the people who, you know, were like, for example, um, a lot of people who were my uh, business associates, when we first started our company, we didn't really have like a core ethos within Real Social Dynamics. And as a result, a lot of them, when they were trying to connect with people or network, whether it's a potential student or what have you, they didn't really connect with them or try to uh, develop, I guess, that fraternity kind of friendship kind of vibe that we want to have as a core within Real Social Dynamics. And it's kind of interesting to me because a lot of these people now have converted their mindset where they focus a lot on you know, internal self-actualization, identity level change, and these concepts because it, it works, it's really powerful. Um, I think most people that I know that are really, really talented, yet they don't have true success in their career, is because they're failing to develop a Rolodex of people that can connect with them on a likability level. So many people, when they go to networking events or hanging out with other people and they're not with their friends, especially if they're newer on their career, or they haven't learned how to network, maybe they're super introverted, will just hang out on their cell phone, texting their friends. They won't try to connect with people, even though they should, but it's usually because they're not used to connecting with that kind of personality type. And as a result of not expanding the, the variety of personalities that you can connect with, these people kind of rub people the wrong way. They rub them in a way where people think that they don't like them. When all in all, it might be because they're shy, they don't know how to connect with people. Usually it's about them not having the right mindset. They're kind of just looking for people that could help them with their career, as opposed to uh, offering value to connect them with something else. You know, um, I, think, I think about particular people in, in my life that have had tragically unsuccessful careers, even though they had massive amounts of talent. And that's the biggest flaw. The flaw that because you have a massive amount of talent, you're gonna get success. But you can't get success without a powerful network of people that are able to inspire you, help you take yourself to the next level, and kind of rise your game through the uh, influence and, and spirit of people that they can introduce you to, and also open up your eyes to other opportunities. Earlier today, I was talking to one of my friends, Jason, about the value of continual education. And I think that continual education, for me, is not just about the connecting with you know, new people or connecting with like a new curriculum. It's usually about uh, kind of like opening up my mind to new opportunities, new kinds of personalities, new kinds of skill sets. And I, tr and I guess my parents, They've always hated that. I mean, one of the things that you always try to focus on in college is that you have so little time. Why would you try to master more than one thing at a time? I mean, some people will master just like um, just video production or just, you know, arts like they'll be in theater or just, you know, something else. But I feel like when you try to learn a master multiple skills, you get something that's unique. You can interchange, interconnect different skill sets. And I find like the same thing happens when you're trying to connect with, with people in your network. I feel like when you're trying to connect with different networks of people, some people in the art, some people in business, you end up with a, a group of people that know arts and business together and it might inspire you to go on the business side of art. If you're connecting with people who are really involved with technology or involved with uh, marketing, maybe you'll get involved with marketing technology. But just trying to focus on one thing at a time I believe fails most of society. I think that if you look at uh, the typical academic educational system, 
many people who I know graduated from the top universities of the world, they just are not making it as well as people who have just diversified and mastered a, a bunch of various core skills. And I, I feel like also as a result of that, there's a lack of innovation and creativity. Um, if I look at people like uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, for example, he mastered art of freestyle um, and he also mastered the art of theater. He combined it together to create hip hop theater. It's just mastering various two different things. At the same time, there's a lot of freestyle rappers that never get into theater. There's a lot of people in theater who never get into hip hop. So I love the idea of combining different elements. And when I look at the world of people out there, I also look at everyone as an opportunity to educate yourself about a new world of thinking, a new way of thinking about the world. And I, I love that. And I, I love the opportunity also to share my experiences. Um, one of the things I really love about creating these YouTube videos is I can share how I view the world and go on these long rants that are somewhat therapeutic. They also allow me to kind of just clarify so many things that are going on in my mind so I could uh, help my friends better. And I think that's been a, a great help for me. Um, I also love the opportunity that people could ask questions. That's why I always ask people to post questions below so I can know exactly what they're thinking and also allow me to kind of clarify the direction of how I can take things to the next level. I think, I think a lot of what I do as like a, a businessman first, more than say like a creator in my own company. You know, I feel like I have a creative side of myself, but most of my thought is about building blocks, building infrastructure. When I look at my network, a lot of it has to do with me kind of putting pieces together and doing it very fast because I feel like there's only so much time and I kind of feel like I'm always rushing to build something. And I want to build it as grand as possible. Um, and I feel like um, most of my time, I'm always learning more and to take myself to the next level, I have to. Because if I don't, I'm just gonna rely on the skills that I already have and I feel like um, those skills always change with technology changing, cultures changing, and also your relationships. The more you spend time with some group of people, the less you have to spend with others. Me, I'm gonna be spending a lot more time with my, my family and my core business friends and my core soul circle as opposed to the past where I built this massive Rolodex. I just feel like um, that's what I have to do right now because I spent so much time developing this. Most people though, don't have the size of a network that they want to have. Most people haven't really tried to build the network that they should have. Boomerang back to the original question, how do you decide what value you can offer other people? The key is to listen to what other people are saying. When people talk about pretty much any topic for the first time and they're actually going deep into it, you can see them talking passionately about it, you know that's something that they care about. So you wanna figure out ways that you can help people in accomplishing that goal, or even the quick mentioning of various topics. Like if somebody talks to me about how they're saving money to go up to uh, London to go on a vacation. One of the things that first comes to my mind is what personal experience and knowledge from my trip to London or from friends I know who've gone to London or from stories of or magazine articles of things that I think are really cool, can I share with them so that I can help them accomplish their goal, make it more affordable, make it a better experience. I'm always trying to think about ways I could add value. Value not just from the standpoint of knowledge, but also from personal experience. So I wanna build my personal repertoire of experiences as high as possible because I know that if I do that, then I can have a lot more value to share. It's like um, using the power of Gestalt, who is a philosopher that said, as opposed to telling somebody, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you're more likely going to help that person by saying, well, from my experience, I've done this and this and this, and I've seen other people do this and this and this, and that's how it's changed my perspective. And if that inspires them to take that action that, you're, that you've gotten success from, that's great, but you're not telling them to do that action. Other people don't want you just to tell them, hey, you should do this, you should do that, and they're open-minded to it. Most people have an ego that blocks them from wanting to take a particular course of action from somebody else. And that's they're truly in the state where they're mentoring or being mentored. Most people though, even as mentors, mentoring somebody who's younger than them, like a, a father to a son or um, a business leader to an intern, 
most people will mentor people in the wrong way and give them bad advice because their personal experience was from their own personal perspective, which is limited. It's not fully encompassing. And as a result, they should be listening to your experiences because it might help them. But you should be taking what you say with a grain of salt. I do that all the time. And even if people are watching my videos, I always recommend that as well. <laughs> now we're underneath all these crazy birds. and They're so loud. Um, so I, I always listen to people that are able to offer really exciting perspectives. I love people that have diversified, done things that are very unique, unique things that I could learn from and, and share. It's, it's uh, not uh, very often that I, I really am kind of like locked in my world and not open to listening to what's going out there. That's the other thing that also allows you to focus on what other people are saying because having that listening ear of you know seeking what other people are saying or sometimes repeating it back to them so you can hear what's going on and then figuring out how you can help them um, it's great I mean I always I try to find out what people's favorite passions are where they want to travel the most what they're working on you know what their goals are what they've been working on most recently socially not just professionally um, a lot of people's passions are their family or helping particular friends all of us have experiences, life experiences that are similar but different than other people. It might not always be this, as easy to relate as someone who is um, a doctor to um, somebody who is like an engineer or, I mean, it's a lot easier for a doctor to relate to a doctor, an engineer to relate to an engineer because they have experiences. But everyone has seen a doctor Everyone has knowledge of engineers that they can share, maybe through friends or what have you. But trying to develop that common bond, interest, and knowledge share, I think is very, very valuable. And by having hooks in your conversation, it's more likely that these people are going to want to follow up with you, want to have a bite, want to have a drink with you, want to network with you. Um, for me, I love interviewing people because it allows me to go deep and other people enjoy it because it allows them to get free promotion in front of a bunch of people. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of their public image and how it will be conveyed to other people. And as a result, they are a little bit more camera shy and they don't want to be interviewed. That's fine. And those people, you just build a poor with them on a more personal one-on-one -on -one level and they appreciate that bond because one thing that everyone has as a limited, finite thing that's very valuable is time. And where you invest your time is super, super important. Uh, and there's so many people that I know that I wish I could spend more time with that I just am not. On the other hand, there's also a lot of people who I know that I wish I could spend more time with, but I cannot because these people are not the kind of people that, even though I want to help them, they're not the kind of people that are open to being helped or they have a, a more closed-minded attitude or they just rub my friends the wrong way. Um, on the other hand, I just have a lot of friends that I can connect with them with one social circle and not another. And so the key is to also figure out which people in your social circle could vibe together and trying to connect them as well as trying to figure out, you know, how you can help them. Uh, because when you have people that are connected to the people that are closest to you, it kind of always comes back to you. And also when you introduce people to others that help them change their careers, change their personal life for the better, all the positive benefits from that are relayed back to you. Um, when you introduce uh, somebody to somebody else and they're not adding value, they're the wrong kind of people, it can reflect badly upon you, but it's less likely to have, it's, it's a lot easier to get that and give the value to other people when you're connecting people to each other and the impact of something negative happening is a lot less likely to be attributed to you because if something negative happens, it's attributed usually to the person that, you know, interacted with the other person in a negative way. It's usually not because people don't usually blame you for introducing them to somebody that has some kind of negative impact in their life. But they usually do attribute good feelings and good relations to you when you introduce somebody that has helped their life for the better. I hope you're inspired a little bit more to take more action. And I hope that you take that action to get a more powerful network, add value to other people's lives, and use it to get more success in your personal and business career.